Yes. Um, here is the uh, title, and, and then uh, I, I think I, I what I'm going to do tonight is the uh, first uh, photosomal acoustic uh, of nanostructures. This is uh, of about carbon nanotubes. And this subject is uh, somewhat different from the electron microscopy, but uh, as, as you know, this carbon nanotube was uh, discovered by using electron microscope. So uh, without microscopy, there is no this interesting material. So I'd like to speak about this uh, at the beginning. Then, then uh, I, I go through the uh, my the sort of nanomaterial research uh, work um, using a high resolution electron microscopy. And I have done many the uh, work at a different uh, the uh, location, Arizona State. We, I spent a short time at Cambridge as well, and, 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 and it's Japan. So uh, at all these uh, the, uh, the places, I did some some work about the material, so I like to go through some of the uh, stuff I have done there. Then, uh, lastly, is the quantitative EDS atomic imaging of 50 years old complex oxide. You will find what it is. This is very interesting to me, uh, and so uh, I, I can't see this up here, but, but I, I, I said that these are ongoing the uh, subject, the, the, the uh, project by my own, right? So uh, then uh, I like to show the uh, some the simple experiment, okay? So before going to the next one, so here I, I have the uh, carbon nanotube, the, the um, what we call the mat, okay? So uh, quite black stuff, right? Then uh, here I have I have the flashlight. Then I, I irradiate this this one. Now you know, I approach the microphone. This is carbon nanotube. This is simple flashlight make sound. I, I tell you why. And this is quite interesting. The typical nanomaterial, right? All right, so, so I, I go to the next slide. And um, yeah, this, this is my carbon nanotube here, right? I, what, what I did is this, and, and this is the visible visible light, okay? And and actually, this is not the continuous CW light. This is the pulsed. That, that is important. Then, then uh, yes, I, I, I irradiate this, and then I, we can pick up the uh, sound. It, it's a rather loud sound, okay? Even, even uh, directly, you can hear by ear. So uh, I, then uh, the, the, this energy distribution of this uh, the flashlight, okay? So, so covering the, uh, it, it, this is a white LED lamp. So it's not like uh, the, the, the simple the, uh, peaks, but we have some, some distribution, okay? So this is my the photon, photon energies. So excitation photon energy is the radiative decay, within a carbon nanotube or non-radiative decay or somewhere in, in here. So uh, that's a little bit uh, the physics in it. Okay. So uh, actually this was discovered many, many years ago. I, I did, this was discovered by Alexander Graham Bell, 18 here, here 1881, okay. And then, then he said, upon the production of sound by radiant energy, the radiant means the uh, sunlight. He, he experimented uh, uh, apparatus like that, and then the important is he used the sunlight and, uh, and the chopped the sunlight and the shines, the many material, and he, he discovered the sound. Okay. 
So uh, it's not my own, but I, I, I last year accidentally I came across with this uh, the uh, phenomena, uh, looking at the carbon nanotubes. Anyway, then a little bit more explanation. And also, uh, 1881, British physicist, okay, John Tyndall, remember in the, in the textbook, action of intermi intermittent uh, beam of radiant heat upon gaseous matter. And he, he already gave a, a nice explanation why you have the sound. And then this is uh, small, the, the material, uh, and surrounding with gas, air, okay? And, and then we, we send the, uh, the photon energy to, to this material. Then maybe warm up. The surrounding gas, uh, air molecule might be heated up, heated up like that, okay? So uh, expand. The non radiated area is, is just ordinary temperature. So we have temperature difference, TA, TV. So uh, temperature, that, that means we have the different pressure. Okay, and the pressure is, is, is uh, changing in time because this is pulse to light, okay? So uh, the Tyndall used uh, also the intermittent B, okay? So uh, that, that, in that way, we, we produce the uh, audible sound. It, it's not a, the uh, supersonic, su supersonic or, or uh, uh, right. So uh, th that's why we have this one. And the, the, my, the, uh, the flashlight had this uh, the frequency. It, it's quite slow because 500 uh, hertz, all right. So, uh, but it makes a big noise, big sound. This is the, uh, the biggest sound I, I can observe from the uh, single old carbon nanotube. The, the, this is the, uh, the fully transform of, of uh, actual sound. So we have frequency distribution. So the, the, this is the frequencies. Started with 0.5 k, k kilohertz and then up to the 20 k. So, so you can't hear our human human ears, but but so we have a lot of uh, the the sounds from this carbon nanotube, right? So uh, and 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 the one thing I I, I show you is the, the application. So I I, I had the carbon nanotube on on, on this uh, the uh, the uh, filtering paper, okay? Only at seven ppm. And, and I think I have um, more more the the CNT on these uh, papers, so I listen to to the sound from these papers, okay, through through the microphone, of course. Then uh, you see the, uh, as you in, increase the uh, amount the um, the amount of material of carbon nanotube, you, you get the bigger 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 sound. So uh, this is very interesting, like that 7 p.m. and I'd increase the uh, amount of carbon nanotube, then you get more sound. So it can be used for, for measuring the weight by listening to sound. That, that, that's fun. All right, so uh, a little bit of physics. Um, so I found two types of this sound. This one's simple because this is glass, glass transparent, so there is no sound. Okay, and and, and single single carbon nanotube give us a biggest of sound, and and the HOPG sub this is a solid surface, and and then I can hear a little bit to the high frequency sound, but not high, not much, but if if I go to the metal solid metal surface. Then no 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 sound in in a high frequency region, but the uh, in low frequency region I can hear some sound, for, right? But the uh, interestingly, if you go to the gold C uh, film or, or a collodion, then then you, you have this uh, the high frequency the uh, sound like, like carbon nanotube. So uh, here is something interesting in physics. So when you go to the nanostructured particle areas, then, then, then you can hear different sound okay, like, like that. So the, the, this is the typical case. Then the, uh, in the shine lights, and then we can hear the sound. 
Now, the, uh, we, we know this, if you have the colloidal, the gold uh, solution, then, then you will see a color. You, you know, this is color plasmatic uh, oscillation responsible for this color. And then this optical absorption, if you change the uh, different side, you have different color, all right? So I, I think the, uh, yeah, the, these are responsible for, for making the, the, this, this sound here, I guess. And probably uh, the, the, uh, all these sounds coming from these uh, nanostructures are somehow related to this localized surface plasma resonance. That's my the naive, the uh, in, in, intuitive interpretation at this moment. All right. So uh, yes, uh, my question is why why single would have none to best for the photo photosome acoustic uh, audible sound generation because of the, I think carbon nanotube had the two types of structures, the semiconductive and, and, and the metallic one. So maybe metallic tubes uh, are responsible for making the uh, sound like, like a gold particle, okay, plasmonic uh, resonance. Right. So uh, I, I think the, yes, the free electrons are responsible for for the for the sound. Right. I think that's all about uh, the uh, my new finding uh, last last year. So uh, I can go back to the, my the original sort of presentation. And I, actually, this is a carbon nanotube. And and if you shine the light, then then these carbon nanotube uh, make a sound. So uh, um, and and I, I said this was discovered by using the high resolution microscopy. So so this is related carbon nanotube is related to the uh, microscopy greatly. Single carbon nanotube. I'll be back uh, to explain more about the carbon nanotube. But but at this time I just showed the couple of slides. This is a single carbon nanotube, and and then then uh, this is the uh, uh, if you show this car on, only this electron micrograph, maybe uh, the, this uh, little fiber, tiny fiber, might be uh, graphitic uh, the material or amorphous. Uh, we cannot tell, but we need some evidence, right? So th this is important. Then, then uh, there is an electron diffraction pattern from single filament. Uh, this is. This wasn't uh, so easy to take the uh, electron diffraction pattern like this from the uh, 10 no one nanometer the uh, fi fibers, but but I I could manage it uh, many years ago already. Anyway, you need to have this uh, electron diffraction pattern to to this this structure have really the graphitic structures. All right. So. Uh, and, and this is a, a part of my graduate student work, okay? So this, this is the, uh, this, the, uh, the, 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 uh, say the, um, the AG, uh, silver, silver whiskers, okay? I, I, I have here the, the uh, title, but I can't see. Maybe you can see it. All, all right. So, so this is the morphology is is quite similar to carbon nanotube, okay, and and this is the uh, go the the silver filament has uh, not a simple the uh, single crystal, but but I I, I found that the uh, it, it has the complicated uh, twin structure that's why you we have the uh, quite anisotropic crystal growth from the silver bromide. Anyway, so uh, this is the uh, somehow related to carbon nanotube that started already when I was the graduate student. Now this is the uh, experience with uh, John Calvi. I, I think uh, I cannot see the uh, title here, but I, um, I I spent Arizona State University seventy to eighty two, where the these are. Uh, the, I have done there the uh, high resolution microscopy, complex oxide, and amorphous carbon film, the discovery of spherical graphite, okay, single atom imaging. So I, I show you the, briefly this, uh, what I have done. So this is the uh, 
traditional the dislocation image I, I steal from the Kiteo, the uh, book. And that's the, my first uh, the high resolution micrograph uh, taken. I, I, I can't see the title here. Maybe uh, you can see. This is the world's first uh, high resolution micrograph showing the uh, atoms, not the individual, but columns of uh, atoms column. Yes, but we can see the sort of atomic arrangement in the crystal. So, uh, and yeah, this one, I, I'm going to show you the latest one using this uh, 50 years old material, okay? So uh, this is very, very interesting to me. Um, so John Cowley, the, uh, when I was at, at Arizona State University, yes, well, well, one of the uh, application of high resolution microscopy is not uh, simply the analysis of crystal structures, but uh, you look, look at, you see the dark dots everywhere. So what they are. Point defect actually, the, uh, those are, you cannot see through the, the X-ray or other technique where we can do uh, using microscopy. So, so uh, the, this material, uh, niobium oxide, and then, then, then I, one oxygen is missing here. So the, this is non, non stoichiometric uh, compound, non stoichiometric compound, uh, similar to this one too. Titanium now, the album oxide. Anyway, so uh, uh, people at that time, they are looking for where they miss, missing oxygen. But uh, actually, dark dots, are, dark dots are related to the uh, this missing oxygen. That uh, probably this dot, the uh, point defect sort of. Then, then uh, if you look at the detail, the uh, probably the, this is kind of uh, crystalline defect. And, and the cation moved to, to, to ordinary site by irradiating electron B. So get back to the original the structure, and then we're missing the dark dots are gone, right? So in this way, we characterize the uh, sort of uh, the uh, crystalline defect, point defect, which are not seen, not analyzed by X-ray or other diffraction technique. Where we should go, we should do. That's my sort of uh, the uh, uh, strategy to do the microscopy. Right, one trick in 1970, when I moved to the Arizona State, uh, microscopy resolution is not high enough to see individual, individual atoms. So because people using this uh, hairpin type the uh, filament. Then uh, this is my the special technique. I I use the uh, what we call the pointed filament. Okay, so pointed filament was discovered uh, the, developed by my boss when I was at uh, Tohoku University. So uh, if you use this one, um, we get a little bit uh, the brighter electron source, which is good for the high resolution work. And, and this is later uh, developed, uh, as you see, the, uh, the presently, the, uh, all the uh, FEG, the, pointed, the field emission gun, had this pointed uh, filament, filament. Anyway, so uh, I, I used this one so that uh, no other people couldn't get the high resolution. So I was sort of front runner at that time, right? Right, so uh, then, then uh, some other, other, other the, uh, stuff is uh, at that time in 1970, who is going to see the individual atoms under the high, the high resolution microscopy? So I, I did this experiment. This is graphite, graphite substrate. And then, then I deposited the, the tungsten atoms onto steps here. And then then uh, shined the light. Send direction beam, then, then the, these uh, the clusters uh, get together, the growing larger and larger. So uh, the very small one might be the in individual tungsten atoms. And then I, I reported this experiment. I, I saw the single atoms on, 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 on the graphite. Anyway, at that time also, the uh, instead of seeing individual atoms, which is not so easy. So I, I thought about uh, what about this? This, this is the, 
line, but, but actually th th this is like, like, like key here, okay? Graphite, graphite and edge on image everywhere. So uh, instead of uh, seeing the ind individual atoms, but I, I, I thought about, uh, I can see the plane of atoms. So uh, I, I, and interestingly, uh, I, I said already a tubular shaped particle graphite carbon, which is carbon nanotube, the multiple carbon nanotube. And th this was reported in 1980. Then the 11 years later, I, I deposited carbon nanotube. So well before that, I had already this multiple carbon nanotube, but I didn't, I didn't know this is to, I, I said the tubular structure, but I was looking for the, this uh, atomic layers, single atom layers. Anyway, also oh, this, this is the, uh, an, another one at that time I did, and uh, this is uh, sort of, sort of uh, what people call the onion type graphite structure. So uh, in the center, we have uh, probably close to the uh, fullerene molecule. Because this, this is very important because I, I, I reported this on 1980. You, you know, the, uh, the fullerene was discovered 1985. So five years later, they discovered the Kloto, yeah, the uh, Smoli discovered the, the uh, fullerene molecule. But the, uh, there was some, some story uh, until before the, 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 they received the uh, Nobel Prize. Um, the, uh, because when they, they published the, the paper 1985, not, not many people believe they, they, they are structure like, like, like Fullerton structures because they don't have the direct evidence to show the, uh, this uh, Fullerton structures. So, uh, the, the, somehow they, they find, they saw my pictures, uh, the electron micrograph and then the, this, this might be uh, the uh, direct evidence of a fullerene molecule. So, so this, this uh, the uh, picture, they liked it very much. And then uh, since then I acquainted with this, That's, that is related to also discovery of carbon nanotube. So the, the crota smoli is very important, right? And then and also the, even that paper, I, I, I said to, in order to explain this curved graphics, graphitic uh, the, uh, layers, we should have the Pentagon, Pentagon. And then even in, uh, I, I said that there must be 12 Pentagons to, to have this curved, curved structure. But I, did, I, 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 I didn't say that yeah, you know, this is a full and molecular structure, but I, I was very close to this, uh, the Fullerton structures. Anyway, interestingly, all these uh, full, full onions and, and elongated the graphic structures were discovered, found in this uh, conventional, the uh, amorphous carbon film. The people, microscopists, they use this amorphous carbon for supporting, specimen supporting film. So uh, within, in this, uh, the amorphous carbon, I closely checked every this film, and I saw these onion structures and other graphitic structures. So, so that was uh, very lucky, you know. I, I could see them. All right. So, uh, next one is uh, this. This is the, I, I left this the uh, Arizona, and, and this is about the gold, uh, the uh, structure, the instability of gold. Okay, so uh, you, you see this gold moving along, and right. So uh, under the electron beam, this uh, small the uh, this is uh, uh, about uh, the twenty uh, the the uh, Armstrong cross, um, the uh, shape and internal atoms, gold atoms. Uh, all the time moving around and to, to have different structures. This is simple cubic, simple octahedral, the uh, gold clusters, but, but it's the hexahedral phase. So you see uh, twins. So uh, I, I, I found this very interesting with the uh, dynamic movement of uh, gold. And so uh, this is my trick to, in order to see this, uh, the images, the previous images, 
you you should have the uh, let's see you should have nice uh, the uh, sporting the uh, film to, to put the uh, small gold on on it but the, my my approach is this i prepare the, the this is the uh, silicon the spheres i prepare this already nanostructured right then onto that I deposited the gold, so that uh, if you look at the gold particle at edge, so underneath there is no no supporting film at all, so that we could get the good images. If you look at these particles, they are sitting on on the silicon substrate. You don't get the good images. So. So that that was my approach to to see the uh, high resolution information from such a uh, small gold particle. Anyway, and and, and this uh, this is the uh, not only just seeing the uh, gold particle, but the, soon after the uh, professor Haruta came to me, and he wanted to see the uh, his gold catalyst. So th this is my micrograph. By the way, it's the, when, when Haruta discovered the gold catalyst, the world famous catalyst uh, professor don't believe his discovery. And so he, he had a rather hard time at the beginning. Um, so uh, this this was 1988 or 89, okay? Um, so, so, uh, the, the, uh, I, I helped him uh, to show the, what, what, what the uh, his gold particle looks like. Anyway, so uh, that, that's about the, what I have been doing, I have done at the Arizona State. Uh, partly I explained them to you. Now that I, I moved back to the uh, Japan and, and, and I, I, the, I joined the, uh, the NEC, electronics companies, and um, before that, uh, I, I was in, in different subjects, uh, the projects, but, but the, after that, I, I moved to the company, the research laboratories. So uh, this is the, uh, what I have done there, ultra high vacuum HLTM, ultra high vacuum, okay? So uh, to start the silicon surface structures, so you have to, to remove the uh, silicon oxide to, have, to see the uh, surface. So I I, I, I built the, uh, the high, ultra high vacuum microscope. So I, I show you some more pictures there. The high temperature superconducting oxides and the diamond thin film. This is related to the, the nanotube because of carbon. And I, I did some uh, the alloy compound semiconductor because uh, because I was working for the uh, NEC. And, and uh, there I discovered the uh, carbon nanotube. So, so uh, then uh, I, I said before before I come to this carbon nanotube, I did uh, many the work different materials, nano materials, uh, carbon materials. All these experience and the knowledge is, is important to, to to find this carbon nanotube. All right. So this is the uh, main sort of uh, the uh, subject uh, that what I want to say here. Right, so uh, I, I built the uh, actual JOL, the built the ultra high vacuum, the uh, the high resolution micro microscope because high resolution microscope uh, um, you need the uh, the uh, big big uh, space around the around the specimen because of uh, evacuate uh, the gas. You need a good uh, high conductance. So, uh, but uh, for high resolution, you need a very small pore piece, pore pieces. So uh, you can't get the uh, you know pumping well. So it, it is somehow com com competitive uh, to pack that. Anyway, so this is a machine. I, I built this one, and and, and then uh, uh, this is this is Joel built the uh, because at that time already high. Yeah, auto high vacuum microscope were built by JOL also, but this is only for the uh, diffraction work. Professor Takayanagi 
use the, uh, the, the diffraction, the study using the auto high vacuum microscope, but not the high resolution the microscope. So uh, I, I built this one. I show you the, some of the pictures. Okay, this is silicon 100 surface. 100 surface, we have the, so the, uh, the, uh, the, the modulation, surface structure modulation. Okay, so this is my pictures. This is edge on images. Okay, so, so it's a diamondization taking place on the surface if you have clean subs. So uh, there's no CO2 the uh, oxide layers on top because it, all they are removed in, in uh, ultra high vacuum microscope. So you see this diamonding, these two, two blobs are, you know, it's not uh, equally spaced. So uh, th this is one zero zero surface. And then next one is the one, I can't see here, but one one one, one surface, okay. So uh, if you have the uh, thin film of uh, silicon, the, you have two surfaces, bottom and the top, okay? So uh, the two images, uh, surface images, uh, the, the mixed up. But, but the, so you, what you see is the uh, modulated the structures, the top and also bottom, superposed. But the, I, I worked with the Lori Max, at the, the, the uh, then, then he, he, he managed to pick up the uh, images from this picture. So we, 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 see, we see the uh, these uh, seven by seven the surface structures. So uh, I was uh, very happy with this. However, there's almost the same time. Uh, the, uh, the this was published in '96, but, but the almost same time the. Uh, I, I, I came across with the carbon nanotube. So uh, I, I forget about this uh, surface work. And, and, and I, I simply go to, go to the uh, carbon nanotube work. Right. So uh, then, then I, I, I'm going to explain to you how, how to discover carbon nanotube. And then after that, and then uh, th this is the uh, first uh, publication of uh, reporting carbon nanotubes, and, and then, uh, yes, already I, I said to convince this is graphitic structure, you need this uh, electron diffraction pattern. So uh, you, if you analyze this pattern, then you can re you can say that this is really, the, it has a graphitic structure, not amorphous. Okay, so uh, when you find something new, you need the, you you show the uh, the convincing evidence to 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 make people believe their finding. By the way, the, the, this this uh, citation is amazing. Okay, this single paper, this one. Now the uh, 50, 56, 000, and it's still st still increasing. So still people are working. On, on this material, it's it happened to me already more than 30 years ago, and I, I'm still working. As I show you, yeah, okay. So uh, Kroto is very important. Uh, I need a very time to explain this a bit. Anyway, Kroto came to the Boston the uh, meeting 1990, and. Uh, at that year, there was the discovery of superconductivity of fluorine lens and other oxide. So uh, material science meeting is very, very crowded. And, then, and, and Kroto is one, one of the speakers there. Then I, I, I also there, but I was reporting the diamond, <laughs> no, no, not, not uh, the uh, other material. Anyway, but I, I, I met Kroto. And then and he said, uh, Samir, you, uh, you should do microscopy on, on, on the full lens. So uh, th then uh, he, he really pursued me to do the uh, graphite work. So then coming back from the Boston MRS meeting, and then I, I started to, to look, look for the, uh, the carbonaceous materials or nanomaterials. But I, I told you, I have a lot of experience with, with carbon material already. 
so uh, and including the onion structures, I started to to find the uh, onion structures again, and then and then uh, yes, the, the, I started to look for the, for the this group, uh, the onion structures. But uh, yes, I, I did. You, you see this uh, blob structure that really this uh, the uh, particle structure. But instead, if you look at closely in these pictures, you see tiny the filament everywhere here. Okay, and of course we have very thick one, and also these onion structures. So I I I found what they are. So that's that's the discovery of uh, carbon nanotube. At this time, this is not single crystal, but a few layers uh, carbon nanotube. So, so that that was the beginning, and I so I, I, I said the crota is really important uh, to, to for me to find this uh, carbon nanotube. Then uh, um, after that, at the NEC, uh, the, this was done at the NEC laboratories. And then I, I the uh, Suenaga sensei, the professor Suenaga joined us, and then they, we do a lot of uh, the work on using the carbon nanotubes. So th this is one of them. And then now the uh, already the, we can see see the individual carbon, even the carbon atoms. So uh, the uh, and then the, this this is the also using carbon nanotube. We, we've had this uh, metal fluor lens, and, and and it it has the uh, the gadolinium or something. Um, so then 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 uh, Christian and the Koryaks all say the the uh, we work together, and then then we see the first time we are able to see in the individual this uh, the the uh, metal metal atoms single atoms and, and the EU's uh, the image imaging. So uh, the, this is the uh, very nice. Uh, we are very lucky to do this. Um, now the uh, yes, uh, I move to the uh, the. Uh, I can't see this. Maybe major university. Uh, no, the AIST. This is a government research program. Then then uh, yes, uh, Suenan san continue to do the microscopy. So this time the uh, we had the metal fuller length again, but this time not the eels, but. but 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 the uh, yes if you look look at the uh, ears and also the uh, he he looked at the X-ray X-ray emission um, from from metal then then uh, the, down here we, we have the uh, the conventional sort of the uh, the uh, EUS imaging but also he picked up the uh, the Elvium the uh, X-ray emission from these uh, single atoms but he couldn't get the uh, image image at that time but he he could get the uh, the uh, spectrum from single atoms so uh th this is also a very good work uh, using carbon nanotube and then, then after after that uh, the professor Suenaga developed a very interesting the high resolution microscopy work this is a single filament of carbon a necklace um so uh yes the dynamics uh, uh fantastic and then also uh yes he he also developed the uh eus high resolution imaging as well and then this is graphene and the dynamics and then and and this brighter spot where the nitrogen atoms are in this graphic the uh, network so uh, uh, we enjoyed a lot of this high resolution work at the beginning. Okay, so I, I moved to the major university here now, and then I, I did also the uh, few different material. Bear might I, I need one hour to explain this one. Not many people don't know what what it is, but very interesting. And carbon nanotube, uh, yes. And EDS imaging of complex oxide, um, right. Then the discovery of photothermal acoustic nanomaterial. Oh, right. Um, oh, I, I, did, I did this one. I explained this one also. So uh, I'm going to, to explain this one, oxide. So this is very fun. 
and and act, actually this is very serious material because uh, th this is published uh, the uh, chemical uh, 2021 so two years ago the titanium oxide from discovery of application in first charging lithium ion batteries uh, this paper is published from the uh, cambridge group and uh, gray and the, even good enough there <laughs> one of the, and he, they were talking about this, uh, the uh, now the oxide. The, he, I, I think he, he he said nano material, uh, anode material T I N B two O seven. So this uh, up here, this, this is similar to, to that the T I two N B ten O twenty nine. So so. Uh, and actually, it's the uh, many papers reporting this uh, TINB10 uh, as uh, anode for the lithium batteries. Um, but I, I find interesting the things here. All these battery people said, uh, yeah, they, they use this uh, this one previous one and and this NB2, yeah, TI2 NB10 or 29 that I reported 50 years ago. Anyway. So uh, they said uh, these uh, ternary oxide, uh, they have the uh, solid solution. They cannot distinguish titanium, niobium, they are mixture. So uh, but they, they, maybe battery people don't care the, the, the real structures, but, but maybe it does work for the, for the recent battery. Anyway, so uh, I, 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 I checked this one. So uh, I, I showed you before, uh, that this is the beginning of, of hydrogen microscopy of oxide. And then the same material, this is, uh, I can't see, the, but the 1971. So uh, next, uh, the, yeah, the, the, this is structure, okay? So I, I, I said this, uh, the uh, metal atoms, Titanium and niobium, they are solid solutions. So they don't distinguish there where, where they are. Um, right. Yes, because of this, uh, this uh, balance is complicated for niobium. And then, then uh, right. So, uh, yeah, th this is a problem, solid solution. And uh, yes, again, I, I showed the 1971, my, my pictures. Okay, so, so this, this, exactly the same material, a uh, specimen, I still have it with me. And, and I, I checked it uh, maybe three years ago. And 2021, after 50 years later, th this is the, uh, the new pictures exactly the same structure same material and they look look at the resolution 50 years progress it's it, it it's very very interesting even you can see the uh, oxygen oxygen atom here we don't see the individual metal the, the metal atoms but but other blobs the white region is an open area okay no no, no atoms so, but still, I, I, I said, you can see the, uh, the, the structures, uh, atomic structures. Anyway, then last one, this is, uh, this is it. Um, so resolution, answer is no, because there's pictures, okay? Um, this is the, uh, the uh, ABF image, and then the, the, this is the XEDX image, atomic images, okay? So uh, it, 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 it's a uh, uh, blue one is titanium, pink one is niobium, and then and blue one the the dark blue is oxygen. So from this picture you see uh, already the, 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 these two metal atoms are ordered, right? These are niobium, and, and, and here, here we have the tungsten, uh, not, not tungsten, the niobium. So uh, then uh, we can say more. Uh, the, this is a uh, microscope used. Uh, the, this is JOL um, um, 300F. Um, so uh, the X-ray spectrum, you see it, it, titanium and niobium. 
then 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 uh, this is uh, the uh, ima imaging uh, from uh, in individual atoms uh, columns of atoms okay so uh, the hard if this and, and the niobium and then this one titanium the, this is oxygen I, I i speak about oxygen um you see the now in the, the titanium and the older the, in in in, in the hard humidity, we, we don't see, but a little smaller contest. But, but anyway, so we, these are uh, the titanium and the niobium are distributed everywhere. So uh, still there are mixtures of niobium and the titanium. So uh, then then now uh, uh, we introduced a uh, sort of uh, rigorous uh, way to measure this intensity. So uh, the, 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 this is one zero zero the, the uh, same same images of okay, niobium, titanium, oxygen. So we see a lot of different contrast, okay? And the same area. If you look at the, the, this this part, then this is weak. Then this is very strong because the, the niobium dominated here. And the, this is uh, yellow is dominated, this is weak. So th this site is dominated with, with, with the titanium. So we can tell this uh, the sort, sort of occupation, and this is different different direction zero zero one. So uh, this atomic column here, okay, uh, yellow that that means titanium dominated. This one is the uh, niobium is weak, but if you go to the niobium images, because this region is much stronger than the, the, this part, okay. So in this way, we, we can tell the uh, more or less, more or less the sort, sort of atomic weight uh, percent from these uh, three directions uh, measurement from three directions. Um, so uh, since I have to watch the time, all right. So uh, we do. I I did the, the, the three observation and then we, we checked the intensity of these uh, the uh, EDS images. Uh, six atomic sites, uh, one, six, uh, blah, blah. then, then uh, we, we estimate this uh, the ratio, uh, three direction, and, and, and then we had the sort of uh, the mixture from these three directions, the information, and then the, we, we had the left EDS, uh, M1, M2, M6, we have this ratio, the occupancy is uh, M1, 23, 29, M2. And, and so on. So, so still we have the mixture, the um, disorder the, the phase. And the, the, this is the uh, the result from neutron diffraction. By the way, so uh, Tony Cheatham did, did this uh, the neutron diffraction study of this material many many years ago, 1974. And then Tony's uh, figures uh, occupancy is, is here. And this is comp comp Compared with EDS fields, uh, but, but uh, yeah, it's the same. But but the uh, 40, 29. This is a big difference comparing with the Newton diffraction study. Anyway, so in this way we, we can tell um, the the uh, occupancies of uh, metal atom site. So lastly, I I, I go to the uh, I I think the uh, three. Um, I can't see the. Uh, of normal, uh, normal intensity of oxygen, the, the EDS images, because the, 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 this is, I have the two, two, two slides here. Now, this is again, the, the oxygen, the uh, EDS images. So uh, we, we see some different uh, the contrast. Uh, actually, if you look at the structures and, and then the octahedron, this, then, then, then uh, Big big circle is oxygen, we are oxygen, okay, and then the metal side yellow, that one is is niobium, but uh, all these sites we we have oxygen, okay, and and then then uh, so if if you look look at this uh, oxygen the uh, the uh, column from the uh, zero zero one no the, the one zero zero direction. So uh, we have the three type of uh, columns, atom columns, oxygen columns. This one only oxygen column, okay? 
So this column is the uh, niobium, oxygen, niobium, oxygen, so on. And, and, and this one is uh, the uh, titanium, oxygen, titanium, oxygen. So uh, if you look at them, the, all, all these columns have the same number of oxygen atoms. Okay, so, so th this column, no, no metal, but this one is, is the metal mixture. So this, this is where this gives us a great difference, different contrast for the, uh, the oxygen images. And, and then these are actually images. And then, uh, right, so oxygen, we use the same number of oxygen, but the images are quite different. No, almost no, no, no oxygen is similar here. And the, the, the already the red one, Niobium site give us the uh, highest oxygen contrast here. So, uh, and, and, and 100 direction. Also, we, we, we can say the same the result. And this is oxygen, uh, the titanium images and, and niobium images. Anyway, so uh, then the explanation is this. Um, so I, I, I said we have three different type of oxygen columns. And then, then you hear here, same number, but, but the contrast is very different. So if you look at this, uh, the intensities, and then we, we, we see the uh, big one, small, middle one, small, big one, small. So uh, all these uh, highest oxygen contrast are corresponding to red one, that, that were the uh, nerve atoms. And the middle one is he, this one, it's a bit weaker than this one, where the, we have the titanium atoms column. So the uh, oxygen contrast uh, give us the highest at this uh, niobium column. And the next one is the titanium. And the oxygen is almost very, very weak. So the explanation is already knows, and then we, we calculate the uh, probe intensity coming through this uh, individual the column, columns, and then uh, these are structures. And the aluminum column, the, 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 this is the uh, depth of our sample, um, 20 nanometers, and, and, and this is the oscillating with the thickness. And so oscillation is what, what we call the bend rooting oscillation. So we, we, this is known well. Anyways, the, if you look at the titanium it, it here, okay, the, the periodicity is a uh, bit uh, larger. Then, and then this is oxygen, it, it's very weak. And then and the peri periodic, the oscillation is very large. So uh, th 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 this is the, uh, simulation okay and then the, the niobium column so the the, the 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 our probe goes through this column and, and then 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 uh, we, we see uh, the uh, very strong intensity of uh, electron beam that means electrons are the uh, sort of attracted to this column and then uh, this is called the electron channeling effect, okay? So oxygen, because the oxygen column is, is, is uh, the potential is, is uh, low, small, smaller than others. So uh, the, uh, the oscillation is, is very long, but, but the intensity is uh, the, the uh, diminished uh, at, at near the surface. So, uh, this column, they, they couldn't get the electron beam. That's why the, uh, the, the, the oxygen column don't, don't give us the uh, X-ray, strong X-ray, because it's, uh, there's no electron coming through this uh, oxygen as, as you go to the deeper region. And, and the titanium is also, but, but titanium is, is weaker than the, this one. If you look at this, uh, the uh, intensity, the, the titanium, the, the niobium is, is the strongest. And next one is titanium and, and uh, oxygen. So uh, definitely the, the, uh, the uh, ch ch electron channeling effect is uh, very important 
to interpret this uh, oxygen the uh, intensities. So uh, the, this is the uh, I don't know the uh, how we can do the uh, sort of quant quantitative uh, the measurement of oxygen, but you have to think of you have to take into account all these uh, the electron channeling effects. Um, so uh, I, I think that's uh, at all. All right, so uh, I, at the beginning, I, I explained the photothermal acoustic of nanostructures using carbon nanotube. So the, this, this, this is uh, quite fun. And uh, I, I want to do uh, more work on this uh, subject project. And then I, I went through quickly the, what I have done in, in my the, uh, careers uh, at, at the different location. The, uh, then, then, then the last one is my the current current uh, study, and but uh, it's quite interesting. I have done 30, 50 years ago, and the same materials are still still it, it, it's very interesting. Not only to me, but other lithium battery people are talking about this uh, oxide. So maybe as, as an electron microscopist, uh, we, we can contribute to the uh, uh, many areas uh, li li like this uh, battery it's uh, areas um, so microscopy is very very important so I think with this uh, I, I finish, finish my talk and I, I, I thank you uh, for listening to my lectures so that, that's all thank you